Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. And now, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 13 in Genesis chapter 35, and we're continuing to read from verse 8. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Alon Bakuth. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Well, um, we've uh, been spending a good deal of time on verse 8 concerning Rebecca's nurse, Deborah, who died. And, and we understand the word, the name Deborah means word. And um, the Hebrew word translated nurse means to give suck, and, and that fits perfectly with the spiritual picture that the Word of God, the Bible, provided spiritual milk to those that became born again, but she has died. And that led us to what happens at the time of the end, once the church age ends, and then the two witnesses who represent the Word of God and and the... Um, ministry of the word within the congregations over the course of the 1955 years of the church age, they are killed. The word dies within the churches and congregations. And also here in verse 8, we, we cannot help but see this heavy emphasis on Deborah, again the word, buried beneath Bethel. Bethel means house of God. So the house of God is above Deborah. And that led us to look at a couple of scriptures where God speaks of Jerusalem or the holy city being trodden underfoot. And, and you know, it's very illustrative of actually what took place in the spiritual realm and the reason why God had to judge the church. And remember... That scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 3, in 1 Timothy 3, uh, where it says in verse 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. There we're told directly, the house of God is the church. Now, you'll find churches will quickly and readily acknowledge and recognize, yes, we're the house of God, we're the church, we are the pillar and ground of the truth, because they they like that idea. They, they want that kind of authority and power. They want to be the ones who are able to loose on earth or bind on earth, and they don't understand that that which is loosed on earth first had to be or having been loosed in heaven or that which they bound having been bound in heaven that the prior action is God's that it's God's gospel it's his word it's his power it's his authority and and there's no way that the corporate church the outward external church and all the churches that comprise that corporate body, that they can be the pillar and ground of the truth. It's extremely obvious, especially when we look and we see all the churches de teach different things. So which church is the pillar and ground of the truth? And well, no, no, it, it, it was never them. It's always been the living God. But here uh, again, the house of God, which is the church. And this was a test for them. Will they be humble? Will they submit 
to the will of God and the power and authority of his word, the Bible, as he reveals his teaching, his doctrine through the scripture? Or will they usurp authority and, and rise up above that of the word and think they are the ones who are to determine what truth is, what the pillar and ground of truth is. And, and they selected the latter. And, and that's why so many churches are in their arrogance, in their pride. They hold fastly to their doctrines that, that are fixed in confessions and creeds and, and denominational positions and will not budge. We are the pillar and ground of the truth. Why should we budge? Well, because the Bible uh, reveals that that teaching of yours that's in your confession, that's in your creed, that your church firmly holds to is false. It's a lie. And it doesn't penetrate. It doesn't shake them one bit. And, and, and they set themselves above. And, and that was developing over the course of the church age. But finally at the end, yes, they rise up. Uh, and and as uh, the Spirit of God departs, leaving the the uh, bare basics of of the Word, the the literal book behind in the congregations, without the the Spirit empowering it and and um, quickening it and 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 so forth, it it's like a dead thing, and. And so at the end, that's the condition. Bethel, the house of God, is above, while Deborah, the word, is beneath. And uh, so that's what God is emphasizing here. She was buried beneath Bethel under another word that indicates below, under an oak. And the name of it was called Alan Bakuth. Well, we... Again, uh, understand, oak of weeping, God of weeping. Christ wept over Jerusalem. At the time, we could say, when the word, the two witnesses are killed, and, and, and so he is viewing a desolate church body. He, he's viewing a church uh, that not one stone is left upon another once the two witnesses are slain. But last in our last study, we started looking at the um, Greek word patio, 3961 in Strong's Concordance, and we saw it was the word in Revelation 11, verse 2, that said, the holy city shall they tread underfoot. They, they will tread underfoot the holy city. And, and uh, that's, again, matches up with the end of the church age, the loosing of Satan, the beginning of of the great tribulation and we also saw in Luke 21 was a second time that same word was used in uh, an identical context spiritually where we read of Jerusalem compassed with armies and God says in verse 23 and 24 of Luke 21 but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck Deborah uh, Rebecca's nurse, the one who gave suck. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, or by the mouth of the word of God, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So there is a second time um, stating the same uh, truth that when the church age is over, the church will be trodden under foot. And, and we saw how this relates to Satan receiving authority. He receives authority and we can see that in Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation 13, um, in verse 1, just, just so we know exactly um, the, the time that's in view. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, a 
and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast is Satan, rising up out of the sea, is rising up out of the, the deep or the bottomless pit. And it is the loosing point of Satan after that 1,000 figurative years of binding and the same point in time. And we can pinpoint it to May 21, 1988. It is mentioned in Revelation 11, verse 7, uh, concerning the two witnesses. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. And to overcome them and kill them. So the same beast rising up from the bottomless pit on one hand or the sea. And it's representing the same thing coming out of the jail, the prison he was in where he had been bound. And, and then we read in Revelation 13, it says in verse 5, And there was given unto him... A mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. The, the Greek word translated power is that word authority. And, and see how the 42 months matches perfectly with Revelation 11 verse 2. The court which is without the temple leave out measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months given to the Gentiles or to the nations, given to Satan, given to Satan. He is given the power or the authority um, to continue 40 and two months, which is a figure that uh, really is, is representing the entirety of the Great Tribulation, the full 23 years. That's how long that which was without the court was given to the Gentiles the whole great tribulation. They trampled underfoot the churches and congregations. And, and, and so also here in verse 7 of Revelation 13, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power or authority, that's excusia, was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And, and so we know he had great power or great authority over that great tribulation period. It was given unto him, given to him because Christ is the one who loosed him or God is the one and they're one and the same. The only one who can give authority because authority rests in God. He possesses all authority. It's God who gives the government's of the nations and their rulers authority remember in uh, Romans chapter 13 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power excusia no authority but of God the powers that be are ordained of God power is derived from God he is the one who is given authority so, at the time Jerusalem is trodden underfoot, the authority to do so is given to the, the king of the Gentiles, the king of Babylon, Satan. And, and just in the, as in the Old Testament, when God speaks of King Nebuchadnezzar and he calls him my servant, well, what task did the Lord give Nebuchadnezzar to perform? to destroy the rebellious nation of Judah and the city of Jerusalem and to bring into captivity the Jewish people. That was what God gave them because it points to what happens at the end as uh, the enemies of God and his kingdom are finally given the authority and power to overcome the saints, the camp of the saints, Jerusalem, and so forth. So there's a link that we see, and, and we see it clearly with those two verses, Luke 21, 24, Revelation 11, verse 2, treading underfoot Jerusalem or the holy city, and 
in order to do so, power is given. We also went to Luke 10. And Luke 10 um, sort of causes us to backtrack in Luke 21 and in uh, Revelation 11. We were looking at the end of the church age in, in verse 2 of Revelation 11. But here in Luke 10, Christ sends forth the 70 two by two. And it certainly is connecting to the whole idea of sending forth the word and the testimony of the two witnesses. The word of God goes here with these two. The word of God goes there with those two. And in um, the sending out of the 70, Christ declares in verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And, and that would relate to the fall of Satan at the time of the cross when he's bound. Um, that, that is when he was evicted from heaven and, and the accuser of our brethren was cast down according to Revelation chapter 12. And then in verse 19, behold, at that time, this is 33 AD, the, the point of the beginning of the church age, Behold, I give unto you power, or excusia, authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And, and we looked at Revelation 11, verses 3 through 6, that speaks of the testimony, or the, the period where the two witnesses are, are ministering on the earth. They had power, uh, if any would hurt them, to destroy them in various ways because the word of God possesses that power. The church, in other words, was given authority by Christ, given excusia for the entirety of the church age. And we can, again, lay it out, began in 33 AD, concluded in 1988, the church had the authority and power. Christ was in their midst and they could operate under the guidance, the direction of the Spirit of God. There was blessing in their actions. and But then the time came when the church age finished and the authority, the power was then transferred to Satan and to his forces, uh, they now now at that point, Satan treads under foot. Now uh, keep in mind here in Luke ten nineteen, uh, speaking to the seventy, the two by two, uh, I I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. But at the end of the church age, that power is now given to the devil, to the enemy of God over the outward representation of God's kingdom on the earth, the corporate church. It's been handed to them, it's been delivered to them, and to Satan that he may be loosed and, and go do the things that he does well, which is to destroy. And that's exactly what he did in bringing about spiritual destruction to all the world's churches and congregations. So that's, that's three times we find this word. And we see authority, power authority is connected. If you possess the authority, you are the one who treads underfoot. If you do not possess the authority, you are the one beneath the foot. You are the one that is being trodden upon. And, and so over the course of the period of Satan's binding, it is as though him and his kingdom were trodden underfoot. But then the tables turn and Satan rises up victorious for the 23 years of great tribulation over the church. But there is another um, point of transferring that authority and and so we we find for example in revelation 14 now uh, revelate in revelation 14 we'll read 
Uh, the fourth time this Greek word patio is found. But uh, first, we have to establish the context. Revelation 14, verse 8 says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels or saintly messengers, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they shall have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The context of Babylon's fall is judgment day. It leads right into this description of drinking of the cup of the wrath of God. And, and that drinking of the cup is done in the presence of the saintly messengers. In other words, um, all the elect children of God left on the earth uh, we we are witnessing we are watching the unsaved inhabitants of the earth be cut off before our eyes as Psalm 37 declares and in in this troubling this tormenting uh, over this prolonged judgment day period uh, it, it is as though they are drinking of the cup of the wrath of God we have drank of that cup in Christ at the foundation of the world. We appear, it's a manifestation before the judgment seat, but we're not being punished. We're just making an appearance, a demonstration, in order to finally show at the conclusion that no sin is upon us. If any sin were upon us, we would have been destroyed with everyone else on that last day, but we will endure to the end because the same are saved. God has saved us already. And and, and so uh, what's in view throughout this time is the patience of the saints and, and they that keep the commandments of God. What was Christ's number one commandment for judgment day or after the great catch of fish? Uh, uh, which typified the great multitude coming out of great tribulation and immediately after the tribulation is judgment day. What was Christ's number one command? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Well, here is the patience of the saints. They that keep the commandments of God and especially that command and the faith of Jesus. So the, the people of God are here. The unsaved are here. One event to all, the righteous and the wicked. And so uh, that establishes the context for Revelation 14, but uh, we've run out of time. Lord willing, in our next study, we'll look at a couple of other verses in Revelation 14, and we'll find that word, trodden, or trodden underfoot, and how it relates to the transfer of authority one more final time. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.